everyone and welcome to October's Comfort Book Club discussion of Marple, a collection of short stories by contemporary writers, all of which are inspired by Agatha Christie's famous amateur detective. I'm Miranda and I'm joined by my mum Donna. Hello everyone. Who is always a part of the Comfort Book Club with me to chat about all of the books. Well, it's, I thoroughly enjoy it and I really enjoyed this. Yes, it was such a fun read, It was wasn't really it? fun, light-hearted fun and you realise how many of our contemporary authors must also love you know, <laughs> Agatha Mar Christie yeah. and Miss Marple. Marple yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think that's so true. Yes. So do get cosy, get your cup of tea. Or I actually have a cup of coffee here. Oh, I gosh. feel like I've gone off. <laughs> <laughs> Not part of the script. <laughs> Mum's little rebellion. Yeah. She does like her coffee though. Yeah, I feel I need once a day. <laughs> it has mm. been a long week. So it has. Grab your favourite hot beverage. Yes. We've also made some lovely cheese and caraway scones that we're going to enjoy a bit later. Yes. But I have put the recipe for these in the video description box. It's also on my blog. So you can check out the recipe. Would you like to tell a bit of the story behind well, the recipe? This is a recipe I made up because I, um, long ago, when Miranda was little, well, you're probably about 12 actually, when you first started reading Agatha Christie, asked me what was seed cake. I think you've probably um, read at Bertram's Hotel. Yes, seed cake is mentioned in that. It's yes. one of Miss Marple's favourite things. And I did make it, and it, it was fine, but I think I've always associated caraway with more um, savoury dishes, sauerkraut or something like, um, even, you know, gouda with caraway mm, yes. seeds. I and love that. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought, oh, you know what? Let me make up a recipe with, um, uh, at that time we were living in Switzerland later on. So I made it with Emmental cheese and caraway seeds. And you always loved it. It was one yes. of your favourite things, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah so, definitely. So that's so how it started. Yes, and yeah. we're sharing the recipe with you today. <laughs> and I personally think it's nicer than seed cake, but I hope, <laughs> hope you enjoy them too. But a scone goes so well with... Yes. Miss Marple. It does. It's right, <laughs> isn't it? It is. Mm. And she's always a favourite comfort read of ours. Absolutely. I mean, we've chosen a Miss Marple mystery before for the Comfort yeah. Book Club. We discussed 450 from Paddington back in January, yeah. which was lots of fun. So I thought it would be great to read a short story collection inspired by this character. And I thought they did a really good job. I thought actually they did very, very well. Yeah. Yes. And I actually like that it was a short story collection too mm. because I love the Agatha Christie Miss Marple short stories. I think they're some of my very favourites. Yes, yes, mine too yes. and I always like to read those in the autumn. In general I like reading short story collections this time of year. I think autumn and winter especially in the run-up to Christmas season, is just so busy, it's hectic for everyone. Yeah. And sometimes all you have time for is to read the odd short story. I so agree with that, you know, and there's something about the way it's set up, her short stories with the Tuesday Club murder. Um, yes. And, and sort of storytelling, and they yes. sit around a fire in armchairs. And exactly, it's so cosy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and perfect autumnal reading. Yeah. I liked how a lot of the stories in this collection were also set in the autumn or in colder weather. Some were also set in the summer, but the first one starts on bonfire night. It does. And there are other few autumnal ones scattered in. There are, and even one that's actually summer, you know, the, I think it's the second to last one, the Mr. The Kate Diaz's. Moss one. Yes. yes. That one references a Christmas tragedy. You're right. Which yes. is one of my very yes. favourite. I think it's my very favourite uh, too. Uh, Miss Marple stories of the ones written by Agatha Christie. Yeah. I love how uh, all of the stories kind of referenced um, the original character and a lot of the original stories yeah. as well. But before we get on to talking a bit more yeah. in detail about that, I wanted to share one of the Comfort Book Club 
readers messages um, Miriam called in and first of all thank you to everyone who called in and left a voice message which we're looking forward to sharing but one thing that Miriam said was that this was the first collection of short stories that she'd read. That's so interesting. And I thought that yeah. was lovely. And like I said, I really feel this is the season for short stories. Mm. So it was lovely to hear that this was your first um, foray into <laughs> short stories, Miriam. <laughs> and so. she, she obviously, well, I hope, she's really enjoyed <laughs> it. Yeah, so let's hear Miriam's message. Hello, Miranda, Donna, and all the Comfort Book Club folks. I'm Miriam from Southern California. I really enjoyed reading the 12 short stories slash mysteries featuring Miss Marple. I've never read a book of short stories before, so it was fun not having to wait until the very end of the book for the mystery to be solved. After finishing the book, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice to have Miss Marple as a neighbor? Such a neat woman, great character. But maybe not. By the way, a big shout out to Blackwell's Books. For those of us who don't live near a bookstore, I can get all your recommended books. They ship quickly and their customer service is amazing. Thank you again for all the great recommendations. Bye. Oh, thank you, Miriam. Yes, thank you so much, Miriam. And I do agree with Miriam. Lovely as Miss Marple is, would you really want to be in the same village <laughs> with all the murders going on? Well, around? exactly. <laughs> I like. I think it was in Miss Marple Takes Manhattan, one of the short stories in here, where um, Miss Marple thinks to herself something like she hopes she doesn't encounter a woman for a second time because that generally doesn't go well for the other person yes. <laughs> and it's so true you yeah. you maybe want to stay clear yes. of miss marple for your own safety uh, but i'm so glad you enjoyed the stories and it is satisfying that you do get the um culmination of the mystery so quickly when you're reading yes, short it's so, stories. Yes, it's so true, isn't it? You really don't have to wade through the book. Yeah. You get it quickly, and they're usually tight, quite tightly plotted. Exactly. I think that's something I really enjoy about mysteries in the short story form, mm. is that everything has to be quite tightly plotted, so it's all wrapped up by the end. And I think when that's done well, it just makes such satisfying reading. Um, but I also love to hear that you're enjoying Blackwell's, Miriam. That's fantastic. Well, we ordered from abroad, so yeah. I, I, I know that that's true. They were always brilliant then, and it's great to hear they are now. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been really long-term fans, yeah. so that's lovely. And I really enjoyed how I think all of the writers did a good job in capturing some aspect of Miss Marple's yes. character. Yes. Whether it was her love for a bit of gossip, Absolutely. her very sharp mind, yeah. her, her love for knitting. Um, in, uh, nostalgic sort of love too of the way things used to be yes, when exactly. she was a girl and everything. And even down to her rheumatism, <laughs> <laughs> yes. getting older, yes, feeling yes. as well. <laughs> Um, but we heard from another comfort book club reader, Gina, who said that this was a bit of an introduction to Miss Marple for her. She had read one of the Miss Marple mysteries before, but she was a lot more familiar with the Poirot mysteries. Um, so let's hear what Gina had to say about that. Hi, Miranda and Donna and everyone in the comfort book club. It's Gina from Lincolnshire. I had read about six or seven Agatha Christie novels prior to this one, but only one of them was a Miss Marple mystery. I was surprised to find that she's so different from Poirot in some ways. Where he's self-assured, she downplays her wit and excellent mind. An insightful comment on people's expectations of women, especially older women, and she certainly uses this expectation to her advantage. No one ever seems to expect her to be the sleuth that she is. I found this book to be such a page-turner. I love that we saw Miss Marple in so many locations. I never expected to find her in Macy's in New York, for example. I bet the writers had a great time coming up with new places for her to visit, and I'm excited to read more of the original books. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Take care. Thank you, Gina. Oh, thank you so much, Gina. Yes, and I loved the way that there were different locales and everything too. Yes. Now, you'd probably know, but it seems to me there's way more Poirot novels. Is that correct? Yes, yes. yes. There are a lot more Poirot yes, mysteries. Yes, and probably short stories as well. Yes, there are so many Poirot short stories as well. And yeah. of course, um, there have been so many televised and 
film versions of yes. Poirot, I think much more than Miss Marple, but that yeah. is also to do just with the volume of Poirot's stories. So I think he is much more well-known, yeah. generally. But I always think Miss Marple deserves to be more widely read because she's my personal favourite. Yeah, mine too. Of Agatha Christie's detectives. And part of why I love her so much is because of how people underestimate yes, her. Yes, and she's very modest, isn't she? Unlike Poirot, who really isn't. <laughs> Although I love Poirot as well, but it's yes. quite different. Yes, yes I yes. know. And she can be very self-effacing, but often that just puts people off their guard. Yeah. Yes. as well yes. and I think she's just so clever too and I just love her as a character I think she's also very kind and generally a bit more likeable perhaps than Poirot yes. I mean I yes. love Poirot too yes. I love the mysteries but for me Miss Marple is a real gem yeah and I do just love the mysteries um that feature her as well I think it's because so often too she really captures that feeling of I don't know 1920s 30s 40s 50s English village it's so perfectly it's true done, a big it? part of her charm is her setting yes I yes, think as well Mary's mead exactly <laughs> and um I liked that one of the mysteries um I think it was the Val McDermott mystery was set in the vicarage Oh yes, in St Mary Mead. Yes. yes, and I really liked that that we got to see, see again. Um, Len, yes, it, Len, isn't it, and his wife Griselda. Uh, I yes, really like Griselda. Yes. They make yeah. an appearance in the very first Miss Marple mystery, which is Murder at the Vicarage, which is very very good. So yes, this mystery was by Val McDermott, and it's called the Second Murder at the Vicarage. <laughs> <laughs> Murder at the Vicarage is one of my favourites, mm. and so I really liked returning to that setting, and that that one was actually set in St. Mary Mead, St. Mary's yes. Mead. Um, a lot of the mysteries weren't in this. They really did feature Miss Marple travelling all over the world, yes. Yes. which was fun. And it was, in some ways, quite true to character, because in the original mysteries, Miss Marple does travel, and even though she's old, she's quite adventurous. She certainly is, and Raymond, her very kind nephew. Yes. He's always giving her little treats where he, yes. you know, he sends her yeah. off. Yeah, Raymond know. and Joan, yes. his wife, yes. like yes. to spoil her a bit, which yes. that comes out yes. in these mysteries too, uh, which I which I really like. And I think that Miss Marple always appreciates new experiences as well. Yes. So I thought that was all very fitting. But Antoinette um, left a voice message for us as well. And one of the things that she mentioned was how much she enjoyed all of the different locales that Miss Marple gets to go to in this collection. So let's hear Antoinette's message. Hello, Miranda and Donna. My name is Antoinette and I'm from Toronto, Canada. I thoroughly enjoyed this month's comfort book club pick. Miss Marple in particular is a character that I have great affection for and have grown to even appreciate more as I've gotten older myself. I love these fresh, innovative, and creative interpretations of Miss Marple through these 12 stories. I loved seeing Miss Marple in various locales, from the hallowed halls of Oxford to the mean streets of Manhattan to sailing along to Hong Kong. It was enjoyable, comforting, and perfect for this time of year. Thank you so much, Miranda and Donna. Oh, thank you, Antoinette. Thank you so much, Antoinette. And it's so true, isn't it? You can just picture in today's world, she would be somebody who'd be going on cruises, thanks to Raymond. You could just picture <laughs> that. I loved that idea, too. Yes, I thought that was yes. such a great idea yeah. for her. But what were some of your very favourites from the collection? Well, it, it, I, I enjoyed many of them. And my very favourite, I have to say, was The Mystery of the As Acid Soil. I, um, I absolutely loved that. I think that was by Kate. Moss, yes. Moss yeah. yeah. I thought it was brilliant. I loved it that it was in English Village because to me in the end, quintessentially, <laughs> she says English Village. It wasn't St. Mary's Mead. But yeah. uh, like in so many of them, she goes to visit an old school friend or something like that, wasn't yes. it? I can't remember exactly. Yes, wasn't it um, one of the characters who you meet in They Do It With Mirrors? Well, she mentions the She's two mentioned. sisters, you don't, Carrie you don't, Louise yes, and, is it and Ruth? I think so. Yes, and this is yes. the third sister that's mentioned yes. in... They do it with mirrors, but actually yes. you don't meet her in no, that. No, that's so, right. So I liked how she was I loved used. that. Yes. I thought it was so brilliant. Yeah. And I mean, there's quite a bit about 
um, Miss Marple's knowledge of the garden and flowers and what soils they grow in. Yes. And there's that lovely one, which you probably remember the name of, where there's, um, uh, is it the blue geranium? Yes, it short is. Short That's story. a Miss Marple short story, another favourite of mine. Yes, which yeah. is all to do with, um, like, sort of alkaline. Things, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And there's a touch of that, of course, it, a lot in, you know, yes. how somebody was bumped off in yes. this short story and how it couldn't be true. And I loved that. Yeah. And I loved the feeling, because I think A Christmas Tragedy is our mm -hmm. favourite mm -hmm. of the Miss Marple short stories. That's mm -hmm. definitely referenced in this one. And she, it was one that she always felt terrible, Miss Marple, because she failed mm. to stop a yes. murder. Yes. And in this, she, it's, it sort of brought her, ah, now this was where I got it right. This was where I could prevent one. Yes. And I loved that. I yes. loved that touch. I liked that one a lot too. What I was like, your favourite? Well, um, I did like that one. I liked yeah. how it referenced Miss Marple's horticultural knowledge yes. which definitely comes yes. out in, yes. in the books and it also reminded me a bit of Barbara Pym mm. that one I think the love affair the with curate. the curate yes. 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 and like a young lady yes. who was like yes. part of the church choir or whatever yes. that had a very Barbara Pymish feel to me yes very much so I just enjoyed that aspect of it too yes and I also liked um was it called the deadly wedding or something like that? Yes, um, yes, yes. With Miss Bella, who oh, I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> um, a really brilliant character as yeah. well, and she and Miss Marple solved the mystery together. Yes, yes. And I thought that one was really fun. I liked that one a lot. I mm. also liked. Um, the second murder at the vicarage yes. because I liked returning to that setting yeah. and those characters. It was a very good Christmas one too, wasn't yes, it? Yes, and I was going to say, I think that, that was one? probably my favourite yes. was the Christmas one. Um, I can't remember what that one was called. Um, Miss Marple's Christmas by yes. Ruth Rare, uh, Ware. Sorry. Yes, that was very well done, I yeah, thought. Yeah, and it was yes. called A Deadly Wedding Day by Adrida Say Mitchell, the other one that yeah. I liked a lot too. Um, I liked that one, and actually two other Comfort Book Club readers said how much they loved um, the Miss Marple Christmas story in this one. Um, that was Sherry and Laura said that that... The, that one was their favourite. So let's yeah. hear um, Laura's message and then Sherry's as well. Hello, Miranda. Hello, Donna. This is Laura from Italy. I must say this collection of short stories was an incredibly delightful read. My favourite one is Miss Marple's Christmas, even if it wasn't about a murder. I really appreciated the cosy atmosphere created by the author before introducing the crime, especially when Miss Marple remembers her childhood Christmases an affair of blazing log fires, stockings full of sweets, and the game of Snapdragon, which I don't know if really belongs to British Christmas traditions, but definitely sounds great fun. I adored the way the author perfectly captured Miss Marple's character, very much the Victorian old lady with her lace cap and gloves, knitting something snowy and white, but we know that her lace cap hides one of the finest crime-solving brains, a mind like a bacon slicer. <laughs> oh, thank you, Laura. <laughs> yes, thank you, Laura. Yes. Um, I guess I so agree with everything you say, and I really enjoyed that one too. The Snapdragon, mm. um, I felt that kind of referenced Halloween party a bit, which was, a, which is an Hercule Poirot mystery. Yeah. Um, but at the start of that book, there's this fabulous description of a Halloween party, a real old-fashioned English Halloween party. So many people say how much Halloween is just this kind of American holiday, and I don't agree with that because a lot of books um, from Britain show that it was quite an old-fashioned... Yes, festivity. Festivity, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. Um, and there's this really good description of a Halloween party in Halloween party. Yes, yes. <laughs> and a game of Snapdragon is played there. And yes. I don't know if it was if it was played a lot Christmas time as well. Probably, probably just in the darker months. Yes. Because I think you'd switch off the lights. Exactly. And you'd have this bowl of 
raisins or whatever it was that had brandy on it absolutely that you'd like to try and snatch them out i mean it's so yes. dangerous <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, play it wouldn't play it now especially since it's a children's game yeah. <laughs> no that's no. <laughs> where they were also jumping over candles gives you a bit of a oh, shudder gosh. now and yes. things like that yes. but yes they live dangerously in those times <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, but let's also hear sherry's message who also loved the christmas short story hi this is sherry from california I really loved the Marple book. It was really fun. I, I listened to it on audio, and they have all these amazing actors doing the narration. So it was remarkable. Um, I think my favorite one was the Christmas one. It was really sweet, and it, it was very Miss Marple. Um, it was really, it was just a really fun read. Thank you for suggesting it. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Yes, thank you, Sherry. I'm glad you enjoyed that one and the collection as a whole. And now I, I'd like to listen to the short story yes. on audio. I bet as that well. would be really good, yes, actually. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to get the audio yeah. edition of it sometime because that does sound like a really fun listen. Yes, it does. And I have to say, one other thing I loved about that story too was how it referenced Dorothy L. Sayers and oh, one of her Christmas short stories. Yes. I thought that was really nice that there was a nod to another queen of crime yeah. of the British Golden Age yes. history. Yes. Um, but Victoria also sent a message in about her favourite stories from this collection. So let's hear Victoria's message. Hi, Miranda and Donna. This is Victoria in California. I'll focus on my two favourite stories in the collection, Jade Empress and A Deadly Wedding Day. In Jade Empress, fascinating details about Asian culture play an important role in the story. Ms. Marple's unbiased curiosity about Asian traditions enables her to solve the crime and exposes the racial stereotyping that protects the murderer. In another story, A Deadly Wedding Day, there's a suspicious fruit salad and an unusual Caribbean apple, but the real problem for some of the guests at the wedding is interracial marriage. Unusual cross-cultural dynamics and class conflicts made both stories timely and unique. I'm so interested in hearing your comments. Bye-bye. Well, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. And yes, I really liked um, both those stories as well. I loved that in um, the the Empress one, the Jade the, Empress, uh, Jade Empress yeah. one, that um, they waltz. She waltzes because that's yes. referenced actually in a lot of the books that she learned to waltz as a young girl. And obviously she was yes. still got floating on the blue diamond. <laughs> yes. And I love, um, too. I love all the descriptions of food in that oh, one yes. too. I thought that was, yes. that was yes. so good. Yeah. Um, and yes, a Deadly Wedding Day was a favourite of mine as yeah. well. I loved Miss Bella. And I thought what was so interesting in both stories was it really showed that how different cultures have very different attitude to the elderly yes. and Miss Marple is held in much greater esteem yeah. in the Asian and the Caribbean cultures that yeah. you see in those short stories compared to Western British culture yeah. which so often dismisses yeah. an elderly woman yes. and I thought that was shown really well in those stories and that was an aspect of them that I really loved Me too. too especially when you think Agatha Christie wrote them as she got older and she yeah. referenced once or I think it was her grandmother that she based some of Miss Marple's mm. character on yeah so again someone an older woman in her own life yes yeah. So. yeah and yes I think mm. you do get a sense of how Agatha Christie felt about getting older yes. as she was yes. writing some yes. of the Marple stories did you have one that you didn't enjoy so much or did you have a least sort of fake you know what, I'm going to have to look at the titles <laughs> yeah. because I think probably the very last one which is called The Disappearance yes that was my yeah. least favourite as well yeah. actually yeah um, why, why did you not like well, it well so for much? me it was because it actually went away from the characters in the book yeah. Um, the, like in the original books, I mean. Yeah, the morality. A bit, the, yeah. yeah. I didn't think that Dolly or Miss Marple would behave in the way they do in this short story. And I won't say more than that in no, case you haven't no. quite finished it. Um, but 
Yeah, that just didn't ring true. I thought the others, even though they sat her in very different locations and different times, I thought yeah. they still got the essence of Miss Marple right in yeah, the end. They did. With that one, I wasn't so convinced. I so agree. I felt that neither Miss Marple nor Dolly would act in quite the way in the story that they, that they do. Yeah. And I just think that... Um, I really enjoyed it still, don't get me wrong, but that one was my least favourite. Yes, yeah, same for me really too. Yeah. Enjoyed it, but it was my least yeah. favourite. I, I know what I wanted to ask you is, you know, with this type of elderly female sleuth, um, did you think like, oh yes, um, there's the, the, obviously Agatha Christie writes the best versions of her, but there are other ones that we also love. And who would you recommend if you love Miss Silver? Oh, Miss Silver, <laughs> Miss Silver <laughs> mysteries. Yeah. So you love mine. Them. Yeah, I love I love Patricia Wentworth's yeah. Miss Silver. They're apps. If you haven't read them, you have to start. Yeah. There is there are a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are. Yeah, but I also thought, and this mm. ties in really nicely with your comment about the Barbara Pym aspect. So, you know, the, the curate and yeah, the young the woman. Yes, yeah, yeah. the Kate Moss story. Yes, the Kate Moss story. Is it also made me think, I also love the Mrs. Mallory mysteries mm. by... Um, Hazel Holt. Uh, Hazel Holt. And I thought, oh, yes, that's lovely. You can you can really sort of link to those Yeah, too. she's not as old as Miss Marple. Not at all, and she's been married, and it's a bit different. Yeah. But there's a, she's in a small she, village in Devon. Yeah, so, so she's some, a very good female yeah. detective she as is. well. She yes, is, those yeah. Are, those are really good recommendations if you like Miss Marple. And we were also talking, uh, just you and I yeah. too, when we were sort of chatting about the book together, about other sort of fan fiction or continuations yeah. that have been done of famous detectives. Yeah, there's been some Poirot ones, hasn't there? Yes, I think Sophie Hanna yes. has done some, which I haven't read any of them, I I've don't think. I've read one and mm -hmm. I quite enjoyed it, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'd like to actually read them yeah. and try them. I think there's one just new out by mm. her that's a Poirot one that's set around Christmas. Oh, that would be nice. So I'd like to get that yeah. one and try that. And we were saying we both mm. enjoyed some of the Sherlock Holmes Very much. continuations. Like there, yeah. was, there was really good BBC dramatizations done of the Sherlock Holmes stories and um, I think the main producer or writer for them, Bert yes. Cools, wrote some continuations. And those were some of your very favourite yeah. continuations. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, they're on the radio, they're not in yeah. book form, but I absolutely loved them. But there have been some sort of good One's done by, like, um, Anthony Horowitz as yes, well. He's yes. written some and a few others. But I don't think Miss Marple has been done no, before. No, but it's so, so, so it's special. exciting that they have done this uh, in honour of her. Yes, it would be really yes. fun, wouldn't it, if they did another collection? Yeah. I think that would be fantastic. So let's hope yeah. <laughs> for all the Miss Marple fans out yeah. there. But anyway, thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed listening to our chat about the book today. Extra big thanks to those of you who sent in a voice message to add to our discussion. We really enjoyed hearing from you. But yes, to everyone who read along with us this month, do let us know if you enjoyed the book and which your favourite story out of these um, is. I would really like to know. And yes, next month, we are doing a non-fiction book for non-fiction November, and that's A Home for All Seasons by Gavin Plumley, which we've both yeah, read before. I can't wait. Yeah. But yeah, we're really yeah. looking forward to reading it again and chatting about it. So mm -hmm. do read along with us next month as well. And yes, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. We'll see you again next week. Thank you so much as always for all of your support and for everyone who pressed the super thanks button on my last video, really appreciate that. But thank you as always for all your comments and likes, they mean so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.